the scars we often talk on motorsport TV, do we not, about the size of the current Formula One car. It is yeah. huge, but we often see it in context, of course. We see it in a garage that's built for it to accommodate the two cars. We see it in a pit lane, which has mm -hmm. grown increasingly wide over the years. And of course, we see it on the racetracks of the world, which again are there and designed for the modern car. So the one way, I think, to see how big these cars are is to take them right out of context and put mm -hmm. them in I don't know, why not put them in the headquarters of Motorsport Network here in Richmond in England and have the 2017 Mercedes W08 here with us in our office space. And you can just yeah. get a feel now for how enormous this is. And, and, and well, give us some stats on it. Well, I mean, the, the car is, or well, the Mercedes is over 5.7 metres long. <laughs> Which is, which is a massive amount, as you can see here. It's two metres wide, all the cars are the same width, but the length right. does vary. Uh, Trying to put that into context, obviously you can see physically how big the car is, but this Formula One Mercedes is bigger in length and in width than the S-Class road car, <laughs> which is... The long wheelbase one. Which probably, is a long yeah. wheelbase one, which amazing. is but by some, some measure. Um, yeah. Obviously, it's, it's much lower and it weighs an awful lot And less. I love the way they look under lights as well when, when you mm. have them out of context. They look great. One of the things that always amazes me when we see the car like this is how the driver is sitting here and the rear mm -hmm. axle line seems to be somewhere way over there on the yeah. horizon, so far away. We talked to Rob Wilson about this recently mm. and, and, and some Formula One engineers indeed have done some analysis of how it affects the feel for the driver. So mm. let's pace it out. Let's pace see. it out. So from, from the driver, which is kind of, his yeah. position is fixed to the front axle. You've got one, two, 2.7 metres to the rear axle, which is a huge distance. It is, compared with what Formula One, one cars used to be, sitting on the rear. Yeah. And the other point, I think, with the advent of the halo next year, we're going to mm -hmm. see less of the drivers. Mm. We must remember Sir Sterling Moss winning the 61 <laughs> Monaco Grand Prix with the side panels off the car. And we saw yeah. so much, we saw the leg, the hand movement through the sides of the car. Wouldn't it be great to x-ray a current Formula One car so that we could see exactly that? And what would we see, Scarves? Well, there you are, <laughs> X-ray Formula One car. You can see exactly where the driver is seated quite accurately. Obviously, the cockpit and the driver's seat position is tightly regulated, uh, particularly towards the front axle, which kind of fixes the driver in a position. Mm. But that seating position is very reclined. Their head's just, what, 70 centimetres yeah. above the ground. But then their feet are much higher off. It's like sitting yeah. in a bath with your feet on the top. And that's what kind of makes the difference between this and the old reclining driving position, where the shoulders were back a bit more and the legs were yeah. more or less straight, weren't they? But this is very specific. To, mm -hmm. this, to this era. But we do have the halo next year, so let's have mm -hmm. a look and see what the car will look like with the halo on, which isn't bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're a Halo fan, aren't you? Uh, it, it's a compromise. Yeah, uh, it is. You know, a, I quite like the idea of Jean Todd, president of the FIA, who mm -hmm. suggested, I think it was him, that it should be yellow for the driver leading the World Championship, like the Tour de France. Yeah, that could be good. Yeah, it would be good. I think that would be good for the fans, and it would be nice to see.